coming up next on the Living Faith Network. Showdown of Faith. It's happening in every neighborhood. Every street, sickness, addiction, and violence has been turning countless homes into crime scenes. Suffering, depressed, alone, suicidal. God is with you, and this situation of yours is going to change. But this show is here to bring hope to the hopeless, to prove to you that there is a solution. Now, on the air with Bishop Joshua. The Showdown of Faith. Wake up, America, the Spirit of God is with you. And where God is, there is solution. Where God is, there is peace, happiness. Your soul is in darkness. Yes, your soul is in darkness. And because of the darkness inside of your soul, you cannot move. You cannot move forward in life. Your soul is in darkness. Today, so-called as depression. Because of this darkness inside of your soul, you cannot do anything. You cannot function. You cannot be a mother to your children. You cannot be a wife to your husband. You cannot be the hero, the father for the family because of this depression. However, we are here today to let you know that there is a solution. Kill for depression. Oh, yes. You can be healed. You can be free from depression. We are going to give it to you today some tools on how to overcome this depression. You are going to learn what to do, how to do it to overcome depression in your life. I am not alone, I have a team of faith. Together with me, I have Nori and I have many counselors. Who are they? Pastors, assistants, they are uh, men, women of God to help us. And Nori, everybody, I mean anybody that is in need of help, tell us the ways they have to contact us. Well, they can begin to call our helpline, 1-888-332-4141. You'll speak with one of the counselors. They will help you. And once I have your name and the problem that you are facing, it will be placed inside of the holy oil. You can also send your prayer request through text message. That number is 1-888-312-4141. You can prepare a cup of water, a bottle of water, and set it close to your television. Because before the end of the program, Bishop Joshua will be praying for all of you. The people you see, they are, are available and ready to receive your call. If you want to talk to me right now, it is a live show. You can call me right now. I will be right there to help you. The scripture says the people who sat in darkness, those who live in darkness, have seen a great light. If you are living in darkness, there is a great light for you, and this light will shine upon your life. Today, we are going to teach you how to overcome depression. Unlike other forms of depression, situational depression is always triggered by a recent event or situation. Problems at work or school, retirement, having a child, grieving loss, 
you went through a considerable amount of stress during childhood, it can cause an increased amount of frustration. These life-changing situations caused you to be depressed. You find yourself feeling hopeless, crying regularly, constantly worrying, avoiding social situations and interactions, and ever so often, you have suicidal thoughts. You are left with no control, unable to cope, and overwhelmed with your situational depression. Hi, my name is Martha Falconer, and I was in a car accident last year. In the result of that accident, I had an injury to my back where it made me not be able to walk. I couldn't bend, I couldn't do anything, which set on depression because I couldn't do the things that I used to love, like playing with my grandchildren, uh, exercising and things like that just put me in a total deep depression. Had me feeling doom and gloom, darkness, death, anything that's not light or happy. I know that was the enemy. Just life just was over, you know, because I couldn't do the things that I used to do. So that's what I just call a death, like, you know, because if I can't do what I normally like to do. When I went to my doctor for depression, he put me on medication for depression and also pain for my back. And uh, just, I still felt sad, depressed. Yeah, I just wanted to be home in my bed. That's all I wanted to do. And I knew that that was not me at all. Wake up, America, the spirit of God is... One day I woke up in the morning and I seen this show on called Showdown of Faith. He really, wow, just blessed me. And then he said, go get some water from, you know, downstairs. I ran and got a bottle of water out my refrigerator, ran back upstairs in my room, and he prayed over it. I drank it. Here I am. <laughs> I haven't smiled in a year. <laughs> Six months later, I found out about this church here. I wanted to be a part of that church, and I started coming. When I came to Universal Church, the pastor taught me about the chain of prayer. And the chain of prayer works because it keeps you in a relationship and keep you consistent in God's word and with God. And I believe that's why I'm truly healed. And I'm open now and, and feel much better mentally. Not only physically I can do things, but mentally I feel wonderful. I just want to hug people I don't even know. Just tell them the goodness of God. Just, I just want to burst as you can see. <laughs> But that's how I feel. I don't stay at home anymore. I go out to the park, um, play with my grandchildren. No more depression, depression is gone. Anybody that's going through depression, just know that when you are consistent with God and the Holy Spirit and in the Word, you wouldn't, it will leave you like that. With your faith, and it, you know, you, it'll just go away like that. And just, like I say, be consistent. You will be wonderful. Depression is a thing of the past. Universal uh, Church, I'm telling you, is, is wonderful. They are true people here, true man of God that loves God and very anointed. Just give them a try. Just come on to Universal Church and you will be just like me, happy. Six months without sleeping, that was her situation. Six months in darkness, she could not sleep. Now, she is free. The secret here, Nori, is that she was watching the show of our faith, prayed with us, went to the church. Now, she is free from depression. If you have depression, your soul is hungry. If you have depression, your soul is groaning. Yes, your soul is crying, is in pain. 
and there is no medication for a soul in pain. No, there is no medication, only the power of God. And we are offering here exactly what she received. She is now, Martha is completely free from depression. And the same thing that happened to Martha can happen to those who are watching us right now. And I have names of those who started calling the helpline already asking for prayer. Mrs. Alita, she is asking prayer for a speedy recovery from a car accident that she recently had. Mrs. Vicky, she is calling from Florida. She is asking on behalf of a loved one who is incarcerated. She wants that person to return home to the family. We also have Mrs. Angela. She is asking prayer for her family, also for a breakthrough in her finance. And Mr. Williams, he is also asking prayer for financial blessings. Mr. Williams and those mentioned, your names are inside of the Holy Oil. You can send your prayer request through text message as well, 1-888-312-4141, or even email Bishop Joshua to bbf at universal.org. And once he reads your email, Bishop Joshua will reply back to you. It doesn't matter how you are, what your pain, or what your suffering is. Jesus Christ is telling you now, speak out, I'm all ears. Speak out, I am all ears, to hear you, to pray for you, and advise you. Let me go to the line, hello. Hi. Hello, Miss. What's your name? Sparkle Griffin. Miss Starko, tell me, what is your problem? Um, I've just been going through, like, a financial depression where um, uh, nothing's been going my way, and I, it's causing me to think thoughts of hopelessness and despair. You, did, you, you said financial depression. What is going on? Um, it's just, I haven't been able to work and so my finances has been low and it's been causing depression because I haven't been able to afford the things that I want. Right. Do you sleep well? Yes. Okay. Throughout of the night you sleep well? Um, most of the time. Okay. How do you feel inside? I know you have depression but you might have anxiety as well. Yes, the depression causes anxiety. It's just anxious thoughts and, um, you know, will I ever get the things that I want in life and can I be happy? Because I'm in a situation where I feel like I'm not as happy as I should be. Okay, let me tell you something. For you and everybody, battling depression, suffering with depression. Your soul is empty. Your soul is crushed, squeezed. You have problems coming from here and here, from everywhere. These problems squeezes your soul. Your soul right now is squeezed inside of you. Due to this financial problem, your soul is squeezed whenever you receive another bill, another call, the creditors are calling you, and your soul is crushed. This is what depression is all about. Do you understand me? Uh -huh. So, exactly. yeah, and others have depression when they lose someone or something. In your case, it's a financial problem. Before you go, Nori already wrote your name, your problems. We are going to place right now inside of the holy oil. But before you go, let me show here what financial depression is all about. It all started with a call. Hello? This is an attempt to collect the debt by a debt collector. Any information obtained will be used for that purpose only. Good morning, Mark. I just wanted to let you know that you don't need to come in for work. We don't need you anymore. You're being fired. Yes, Natalie, but you need to understand that since you haven't paid the house for a while, you will need to leave. You can no longer live there. And the next thing you know, you are full of debts, not having a place to live, and without work. But this is not your biggest problem. 
That depression has arised after all these financial difficulties. Committing suicide seems to be the only option to the situation. So you cry yourself to sleep without knowing what to do and where to turn to. Ms. Istaku. Uh -huh. I am going to be praying for you. This depression of yours will come to an end. You live in Texas, but which city? Orange. Orange. Okay. My crew will contact you. I'm going to pray for you. And very soon, don't forget to call me back. Because God will do both. He will solve your financial problem. And he will also set you free once and for all from depression. All right? Okay. God bless you. Have a good one. Uh -huh. I have received here a text message. Uh, right now, at this moment, this person says, my name is Alcides. Uh, I need help with my finances and unemployment. I have no money. I need uh, help. Please uh, put my name in the holy uh, water, please. We are going to place, actually, it's a holy oil. I'm going to place inside of the holy oil. Nori, please, write in, a, uh, in the card the name of Alcides uh, de Pina. Place this name, please, inside of the oil. I have here the device. Anybody can send me a text. Whenever I receive your text, Nori writes the names and we place it inside of the holy oil. As I have the device here, go ahead. If you don't want me to write, I mean to read your name or your problem, just write here in your text, please, don't read my name or my problem, and I promise I won't. However, if you have no problem, I am going to read because the show is live. And your name we are going to place here inside of the holy oil. Once, let me get one, once your name is here inside of this oil, like I have the name of Vicky. Vicky asked prayer for her fiancé. Uh, and the name is the problems all the way from Florida. Are uh, here inside, here, inside of the holy oil. And we do not take it from here. We keep it here. So give us a call right now. Do you have more names? Yes, I do. We actually have Miss Teresa from New York. She is asking prayer for every area of her life. We have Mrs. Adeline. She is asking prayer for good health, also for her family. Miss Adeline, your name is inside of the holy oil. Mrs. Eartha from South Carolina, she is asking prayer for complete and total healing. She suffers with problems in her brain. And we also have Abdul from Florida. He is asking prayer for complete and total healing, Mr. Abdul. And those mentioned, your names are inside of the holy oil. You can continue calling the helpline. The team of faith is there ready to answer your call. Or you can send your prayer request through text message one 888 312-4141. Help is at hand. Help is just a phone call away. Yes, you are going to see now Maritza. She was molested. She was uh, suicidal. She had suicidal thoughts. And this is the big problem that people have. Depression. She was depressed. Before we go into her story, Dr. Soul is here with me. He is going to tell us about darkness. You know, the scripture says, people who sat in darkness have seen great light. You are in darkness. You just want to be in this dark room. You don't want to socialize. You don't want to take care of your house. You don't want to take care of your family, of your affairs. Right now, as I'm speaking, the only light you have inside of the room is the light of the TV or the device. Other than this, everything is dark. Dr. So, why do people with depression like to be in the dark? Bishop, what's happened? Uh, depression is an evil spirit that affects the soul of the person. So, and what's happening in the house of which doctors? In the place where I used to be. People, they, they used to light the white candles because they have no peace in their soul. 
in their search for peace, light the scandals. It's when the darkness comes in their life to destroy their lives. So, and maybe you light candles inside of your house, trying to light your house. The light of a candle, electricity, is not the light of God. See what the scripture says. People live set in darkness. Maybe you are now sitting in darkness. Have you seen a great light? It's not just light. It's not just the light uh, of the day, the light of the sun, the light of electricity. But have you seen the light of God? So there is no darkness with those who do witchcraft, light candles, those who try to enlighten the house by doing these rituals, right? Yes, thank you, Chop. And the reason thing is that uh, the evil spirit comes in the person's life and suggests them, look, light a candles for you to have peace. You know one thing, everybody will have depression. There is an evil spirit to attack that person. Try to give them exit. How? To kill themselves, to run away, to be in the dark place, to be alive, to be completely destroyed. The evil spirit wants to take full control of their soul where there is no exit plan. So when they light the candles, the evil spirit said, now I'm in control of your life. If you feel something controlling you, you have something that is above you, controlling your mind, your heart. You have this thought to say, kill yourself. Give my call right now. Yes. You are going to be the next person to talk to me right now. Give him a call. 1-888-332-4141. Or you can send a text message. 1-888-312-4141. This is for the text. Send me a text right now. The device is here with me. Let us watch now the case of Maritza who had this depression. My name is Marixa and I'm 33 years old. My suffering started when I was a little child. Um, I went through some things that really affected me and I didn't really talk about it to anyone until I was 11 years old. I was molested in my life by three different people. Um, the first time it was, I was left unattended uh, or with a family member. And the second uh, was actually by a girl. <laughs> it was very, you don't know what to think. Um, and then the one that was someone close to the family was over the year. And um, it ended uh, around age 11. And that's when I was able to talk about it to my mom. But my mom did something that I didn't expect that broke me even more. She told me that I had to pick what to do. She said, you have to pick to forgive or you have to pick if this person goes to jail. Because if this person goes to jail, when someone goes and they accuse of child molestation, they can get raped in jail too. She made me pick, and she made me wear the burden of being an adult when I wasn't one. So she made me feel guilty because I have a little sister and a little brother that this person going to jail would affect all of us. So I said, fine, I forgive. It didn't change what was happening inside of me. That whole time I felt dirty. I thought about ways to get rid of what I was feeling. I thought about suicide at the age of 11. I thought about running away. And to ease the thoughts about suicide, I started cutting myself. I used razor blades and I ended up falling in love with the wrong person for the wrong reasons because I wanted this to leave. It made things worse because now I was a mother with, very young mother with kids and I have four kids. So things after I got married, it seemed to be okay for a little bit and then everything would go bad. This happened every time, every time. It was like you were good for one month, everything was bad. You were good for two months, everything was bad. When my husband was far away, I missed him. But when he was close to me, I wanted to punch him. <laughs> I would go to sleep crying every night, 
every night because I had a, a complexion that I was not worthy. I had, uh, I cried because I didn't know why everything had to come out wrong in my life. Every time I walked by another woman, I already thought she was prettier than me. And when I walked by and people were talking, I already thought that they were talking bad things about me. When I stopped working, I started looking for work again. And I ended up at an interview in an office where the lady who was the owner there, she went to the Universal Church. She told me, Marixa, I wanna take you to a place where they're gonna teach you to learn your faith. Um, when I got to the church, there was a purpose for deliverance and nobody would sleep at the house, nobody. After the deliverance, there was peace in my house. We could all sleep. I remember just looking at my kids and everybody was just like in peace, quiet. And it was the most amazing thing that happened when I, I was delivered. My husband told me, like, I don't know how long later, but he says, you know what? When you started going to that church, see, you changed. You started to focus on yourself. You started to be determined. So this drove me to seek the Holy Spirit. As I seeked him though, I learned to love him above everything else. I learned that my only one intention will be to please God and to be filled. And I seek and I seek. And before I did that prayer, I told the devil that his time was over in my life. I said, that's it, you're done. And God, he came down over me. And when he came over me, he healed me. He healed my wounds. He took me into his arms and it's, it's not an emotion, it's just a certainty of what's happening in that moment. And he showed me how great he is, how, how big, how, there's not enough words, but he also showed me I was not alone. Never again alone, never again the same person. And I started to look forward and I started to know that everything I would do would come out right. My life is a blessing today. My kids and I, we sleep good. We have communion, we get along. Me and my husband, we get along. If he's close by, I love him and he's far away too. I was able to forgive. It was very, very hard um, because once you get complected, then everyone is hurting you. So I had hate against a lot of people. and but I forgave every single person. And I am with a great desire to live, to look forward, to fight for what I believe in. And everything that I had before, 100% gone. Depression, suicidal thoughts, thoughts, uh, the complex, the trauma that I had lived through, everything healed in my life. Totally, totally different. Depression. There are many possible causes of depression. It's believed that several different forces can interact to bring on depression. Due to the millions, even billions of chemical reactions going on in our brain that can affect how we process situations and experience life. Whether it be traumatic moments or simply just seasons changing, all is said to be causes of depression. The perplexing studies behind depression certainly shouldn't be dismissed, but beyond the physical factors of mental illness, come the spiritual factors. Behind all the physical aspects of depression is an evil spirit that brings constant thoughts of sadness, crying spells, insomnia, discouragement, and forces you to do your best to manage the symptoms and hope things get better eventually. Depression has stolen your joy, hobbies, pleasures, quality time with family and loved ones. Depression has stolen your life, and it's not fair. You feel devastated, misunderstood, and alone. You've tried doctors, medication, and just shaken it off like everyone says, but nothing works. You're exhausted and longing to go back to a time when you were once happy. Join us at the Defeat Depression event, October 11th at 10 a.m. at a universal church near you. We have an inspiring message and strong deliverance prayers for you or a loved one you know who is currently experiencing depression. Don't lose hope. We know there is a way out of depression. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Depression can be defeated. It's time to end depression and begin living. And you also can defeat depression. That's why this month, October 11th, we are going to be in this great event. 
I have someone on the line, Miss Lorraine, all the way from Washington. Hello, Miss Lorraine. Hello, 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 hello. Miss Lorraine, tell me, how can I help you? Well, I'm having problems with my right side, from my waist all the way down to my right leg. And I've been taking medicine from the doctor for two or two and a half to two years. And it's not helping me at all. And also, my left arm is numb most of the time. I can't hold anything. And uh, I'm calling for prayer and need help because I have depression also. I know I have depression. And, and I'm not getting any better. And I was hoping that I could get some prayer from Dr. From the from the doctor Joshua, I can't think half time. Miss Lorraine, yes. can you hear me? Yes. Okay. First of all, I'm going to ask Nori to write down your information in your prayer request and put inside of the holy oil, because you know you have this depression, and the depression is a sign that your soul is asking for help. And only God can solve this depression, can remove this depression from you. Notice there, and she will get your last name and put your request inside of the holy oil. Nori. Yes, Miss Lorraine. I wrote, yes. I wrote down your name and the problem that you are facing. Would you like to give your last name? Yes, I would. Brown. Okay. Ms. Lorraine, I'm placing your name right now inside of the holy oil, and we are determining your freedom from this depression, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ms. Lorraine, I have you here with me, Ms. Jennifer. I want you to uh, pay attention now in her story, because you told me you are feeling pain all over your body, you are depressed, and you have no one to help you, right? Yes, that's right. that's right. I want you to pay attention here in her testimony. Pay attention, please. Miss Jennifer, you came to the Universal Church. Tell Miss Lorraine now, because she's watching us, how was your life before you came here? Because you were suffering. I was suffering. I was miserable. I was a depressive person functioning with depression. I was a single mother, I was a nurse working, and I had all these kind of issues going on, financial. My, I was in school, so I, I had my daughter who got pregnant. She was giving me a lot of problems. I had kids who were still in school and college, so I was functioning, but not really functioning. My, my, my spirit was miserable. Just a second, one thing that she said is that she's feeling pain all over her body. In your case, you had a sickness. Yes, I did. Yes? I was suffering from tendonitis from my job because I'm a nurse and there are pills that I had to crush. So I had to use a mechanical pill crusher, which was destroying the tendons in my hand. I was taking pills, Motrin, Tylenol. It was not working. I ended up going to see a specialist, and this turned out to be that I was sent to do therapy. I was going to therapy like three, four times a week. It was not working. So I started to get steroid shots in my hands. The needles were excruciating because it's like a three-inch needle that would go into my hands because the problem was my hand was locking. The my, my thumb and my middle finger were locking up. Some morning when I wake up, they were in so much pain, I had to take the, the left hand to move the fingers out to stretch them out because I was, they were crippled and I was in pain. So the doctor... I, just, just, how, how, how many times were you taking these injections? Like every three months. Three months. Every three months I was going to have this done because even on the job sometimes my coworkers could see the fingers locking. Mm -hmm. Like the, the thumb was like this and I had to be taking my finger, this hand, and move it up because it was locking on, uh, uh, while I'm working. So I had to take a break, ease off my for about 10 minutes, then I would go back to work, but this pain just kept going on, on and on. So the, the specialist said the only thing can ease it would be taking the steroid shots. So I started taking these shots, 
and it was getting too often. I was coming too, too often to him to have this relief. So he said, the next thing is surgery. And I didn't want to do surgery because I'm a single mom. I had my kids. I was going through so much. I was mm -hmm. so depressed. At nights, I actually could not sleep. I was in pain, and I was miserable from all that was going on in my life. I didn't want to get up to go to work, but because I'm the mom, I am the breadwinner, I had to go to work. So I was functioning, but I was so depressed, miserable, sad, because so much was going on. And in, within that point, my brother died suddenly from a heart attack, and that just that made it worse for me. I was going through so much, and when he died, I had to travel, and that cost me a lot to take all the, the children with me to travel back home to bury him. And I was at work, and they were saying, oh, she's so strong, she's this, but I'm saying inside, how can they say that I'm strong when I'm dying? I, I, I don't wanna be here, I don't wanna stay, I don't wanna be at work, I just come because I have to. So. You, you were living like a zombie in front of the people. You were smiling. Uh, you were there saying, I am happy. But when you were going home, you I was, were crying. It was not me. Mm -hmm. It was a different me. I was crying. At nights, I cried. I, my kids, I was snappy at them. I was anxious. I just wanted to stay in the bed. And when it was time when that alarm clock comes on, I was like, no, I don't want to go to work. I just want to lie down. But I had to go because I had my kids and I had to pay my bills. Uh -huh. But I was suffering. Hello, Miss Lorraine? Yes. yes. Did you hear that? Here. You were suffering as now you are suffering. But I want you now to pay attention because you can see her here in front of me. She was suffering. Uh, do you sleep at night? Do you sleep well at night? No, I don't. I don't. I don't sleep well at night. Okay. She was in the same situation. She couldn't sleep. But I want you to pay attention now because you are watching us. And she will let us know how did she know about this ministry. Because for this lady to be here in front of me, she saw a result in her life. Miss uh, Jennifer. Tell Miss Lorraine now, how did you know about this ministry and what God has done for you here in the Universal Church? Okay, one morning as I was getting ready to go to work, I was channel surfing and I saw the showdown of faith on TV. And at that moment, someone was there talking about what I was going through and how they got relieved. So I said, oh my goodness, I'm going to try this. But then I had doubts. So I called the number and they directed me to go to the church. And I, I went to the church that Friday. I can remember it clearly, it was a Friday when I started going. And the, the, I was welcomed there, so it was just so different. Peaceful, calm, the people were so welcoming and I stayed throughout the service and they had this prayer of deliverance. So they called us to the altar, those who were depressed. So I went up and the bishop prayed and he prayed f for all the people who were depressed. And I remember feeling so different. I was feeling a change. So when I went home that night, like all other nights, when I couldn't sleep, I slept. I, when I woke up in the morning, I was actually surprised that I did not wake up during the <laughs> night because I used to be up looking and crying and I did not wake up the whole night. I was I slept like a baby that, that night, and I remember waking up and saying, how come I didn't wake up? How come I didn't wake up during the night as I used to wake up? So because I had gone the Friday and they said to come and keep this chain of prayer going, so I started to come and do the chain of prayer. They talk about the blessed water, and I was going through the problems with my hand, and I said, I'm not going to do surgery. I'm going to do as the the pastors and the bishop are telling me, use my faith and use the water. So I woke up in the, when I woke up in the morning time, I used to take my sip of water. I use it to wash my hands, to wash my hands with it. And then I would take the water to work and during my break, I would rush into the bathroom, 
He will Jesus use you in your faith. Yes. As God was showing you. Yes. Drink the water, wash your hands, hands because it, of this pain. This pain that I was going through. And I use it to wash my hand. And while I'm in the bathroom, I prayed. I drank some more water and I use it to wash my hand. And then and what was what what was the result? What did it do? A little bit for after you? that, I noticed that I was not waking up with the pain. Mm -hmm. Or my fingers were not locking because that was what was mm -hmm. some of the time during the night I would wake up feeling the finger locked. So I um, noticed that I was no longer feeling the pain mm -hmm. and the finger was not locking. And as I continue to use the water, continue to use my faith, now I can do this. I couldn't do this before uh -huh. because when I do this, my finger would lock and I would have to use this. No more pain. No more, no pain. more pain. No more locking. No more pain. I just use my faith and this is, this is the result. And what about the depression? No more depression because the ultimate is to seek the Holy Spirit. Because the bishop and the pastors were always talking about receiving the Holy Spirit. So I did my own 21 day fasting and I, I pour out my heart. I, I ask God to forgive me for anything. I malices and grudges. I ask God to forgive me. I, I, I said, I want to have this Holy Spirit. I need to get this peace, this joy that they were talking about. So the morning when we were called to the altar, I remember saying to God, I did my part. You have to answer me. And suddenly the Spirit of God entered me. And there is this overwhelming joy, this peace that came over me. I was at the altar just laughing and I was filled with so much joy and this peace and this calm that came over me that it's hard to explain, but you have to experience it for yourself. I have no longer no depression. I'm not lo no longer sad. It's just this joy. And I know that with the Holy Spirit, whatever goes on, I will overcome. Yes, there will be trials and, and tribulation, but I know there is somebody greater inside of me who tells me this will this will pass. You will overcome. So no more sickness. No. Healed. Yes. No more depression. No more depression. No more anxiety. None. Is sleeping like a baby. Sleeping like a baby. Peace inside of you. Peace and joy. And Your calm. financial life is blessed today. Blessed today because I moved on to another job and I'm about to launch my own business. Miss Lorraine. Yes. Yes. I'm listening. Look, the same God that transforms her life. It's the one that will transform your eyes. Miss Lorraine, look at me here. Hey, from today on, you will sleep like a baby. Pay attention to what I'm saying. From today on, you will sleep like a baby. God will transform your life. There will be no more depression inside of you. I want you to keep watching the show because in a few, Bishop Joshua will be praying for you. Keep watching us. And all those who are suffering from depression, the God that transforms Miss, Lore Miss uh, Jennifer's life is the one that will transform your life. Miss Lorraine? Yes. Yes. Stay on the line. Stay on the line because Monique will give you the address of our church there in Washington for you to go to church. And the pastor will help you. But I'm here determined that from today on, you will sleep like a baby and you call us back to testify. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you God so much. So much. God bless you. All those who are watching us now, you can keep calling us because in a few we are going to pray. Prepare your cup of water and we are going to bless your life. If you live here in New York, our address is 10 and 1, Fulton Street, Brooklyn, New York. We are ready to help you. Whatever evil that is prevailing against you, against your house, against your family, against your body, you cannot prevail. This disease cannot prevail. This sickness cannot prevail. This infirmity cannot prevail. Cancer cannot prevail. High blood pressure, sugar cannot prevail. This witchcraft cannot prevail. This misery cannot prevail. Your name? Angel. Miss
Miss Angel, what is the result? Well, in the last two weeks, I was waiting. My daughter was, they thought my daughter might have had cancer as well. And then on one Monday I went, they said, well, we need to do a biopsy on her. The very next day I'm at work, I get a call, and the, my doctor says, we think we've seen something. We need to do another biopsy. Did you bring your daughter here? Yes. I brought her here on that Sunday. You guys had that night visual, and we went in that Monday. They did the biopsy. So we're waiting. For, we was waiting for that. On that Tuesday, they called me. They said, well, you need to come in. We need to check. We see something. So I had to go in one day. The next day, they said, we need to take you immediately into the operating room. So I went into the operating room. They did another full biopsy. They said, okay, it's going to be a few days before we get the results back. They called me two days later. They said, it's good. No, no cancer. Two days later, they called me about my daughter. They said, no cancer. No cancer? No. Free. Free. Great is your face. God bless you. This is the result of Jesus' chain of prayer. By coming here to the church for deliverance, what has God done for you? God has delivered me from, you know, thinking about suicide and killing myself. Did you attempt to kill yourself? Yes, I was in a hospital like twice. Mm -hmm. and After coming here Friday, deliverance, you don't need to, you don't have suicidal thoughts anymore? No, that spot is dried up. I don't even think about nothing. You don't want to die? No. Free? Please, free. Your name? Natasha. Ms. Natasha, what's the result of the chain of prayer? I've seen a lot of changes. My health has gotten better. I don't have just one job now. I have two, and I'm able to work them both because one is one that you can work at any time, weekends included. So since I've been coming here, it's been a lot of difference I've been seeing. Not just my health, but my mother also saw a change. She, she decided to come. So it's something that I see that... She saw the change in you and decided to come? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I see that my family is getting better and my health is better. Friday is a day of deliverance where strong prayers work. Prepare your cup of water. In a few, Bishop Joshua will be praying for you. You are watching the Showdown of Faith with Bishop Joshua. She was gathering sticks to make her last meal. This widow was becoming hopeless. Yes. Then she met a prophet who began to ask for water and bread. A little water in a vessel? She said, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. He said, don't be afraid. First, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have. Then he prophesied. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. And today, as prophets, we are prophesying for you to receive the same blessing of multiplication in your life. Give just as a widow and you will see that your jug of oil will not run dry. There are two different ways you can make your challenge. First way is by phone. Just call 1-888-691-2291 and one of our attendants will assist you. Because we don't want just to receive your call and just write your information. No, we are going to prophesy that a financial blessing will come upon your life. Post your letter to 7075 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074. But it is very important that you never send cash. Only check or money order made out to the Universal Church. Joselito believed in this message. He believed that by sowing the seeds, he would prosper. All that she had was the oil and the flour for the last meal. 
imagine yourself somebody had the last meal and she was raising her child by herself on her own. He was, she was a single mother. But when the prophet said, bake the cake for me, in other words, sow the seed, believe the word of God. He never said, I promise to you. He said, the word of God says that the oil, the flour will not finish. Elijah used the word of God. And this is what we do in this ministry. We use the word of God. The word that never fails. Therefore, you are going to sow your seeds. You are going to plant your seed of faith. And the Lord will prosper you. And the Lord will bless your life. I have the flour. I have the oil. You have the seed over there. Go ahead and plant the seed. Give right now what you have, whether little or much. You are not watching me by chance. You are not watching me by coincidence. God knows your financial struggles. The first caller today said, I am depressed because of my finances. Mrs. Starko, she said, I have this financial problem. And because of it, I am depressed. Are you depressed because of your finances? Go ahead and sow the seed. A seed of 50, of 100, of 20, of 1,000. No minimum, no maximum. Go in your faith. God works with numbers. And the Spirit of God gives you a number. The Spirit of God tells you a number for you to sow the seed. Go ahead and plant the seed into this ministry. He's going to bless you. He's going to prosper you. Mr. Joselito did so. He planted the seed. God blessed his business. The number to call is there. one 691 691-2291. Go ahead and call this number. My counselors are ready to receive your call. Let me show the counselors right now. They are busy praying. I have pastors praying right now, praying for those who are sowing the seed. In a few, I'm going to go there to speak to Pastor Quincy. But right now, let us watch Joselito. He sowed the seed. The Lord blessed his life. I had a shop in Philadelphia. And because my relationship with the other wife, I was bad. I had to close the business. I had to close it. I had a business in Delaware. I had a partner. Partner one day, I got sick. I got sick, uh, heart problems. So I put everything under his name. He told me, you're out of the business. Like that, you gotta go. So I can say nothing because everything was under his name. I had to leave. So then I say one day, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I'm not gonna throw the towel. I'm not, I'm not a loser. One day driving on that street, and I always tell my wife, I like that place. I want that place. That place is gonna be mine. And she told me, and yeah, you dream. So right, you watch. So a couple weeks late, we pass that same street. And we see the place with the for, uh, foreign sign. I said, call right now. She called and the guy answered the phone. I said, one weekend we meet to see the place. We went Tuesday over there. I seen the place, the place of all destroyed inside. And he told me like this, I said, you like the place? I said, yeah, I like the place. Are you sure? I said, yeah, I like the place. I want it. The guy went like this to me, I said, you sure? I said, yeah, I want it. I want it. Bring me the paperwork. We're going to sign the lease. We're going to give you the money. We want the place. One day they came and told me, um, you know what? They wanted to buy me the, the buy the place. Came back and said, um, how much you want? I said, give me $80,000 and I left, I left tomorrow. I'm leaving tomorrow. I said, deal. In June, that's when he closed the, the deal. 
and I didn't have no place to go. I had all my cars there, everything there, because I don't have no place to go. I took the money and I sold my seed, and everything from then, from, from then, that day, everything went smooth. My phone was on the car. As soon as I opened the door, my phone rang. When I grabbed the phone, it was the guy. You still want the shop? I said, yeah, I want the shop. They called me, said, you got the closing on the garage. Everything is done. Talked to him, he said, all right, I'm gonna sell all my tools. I'm gonna leave everything, I'm not gonna take nothing. The way God blessed me, uh, uh, I can describe it. Because in three months, look at what I got. I got the garage, I got the tool truck. Now I'm stepping back up. Now I'm building my step the way I want it. God, they don't got no, no limitations. God is, when he open the doors, if you know how to maintain those doors open, they're always gonna be open. But if you, if you let those doors close, that's on you. It was worth selling the seeds. Sow your seed today and reap the blessings of God in your life as it is written. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. To all the viewers of the Showdown of Faith on Living Faith, you have two different ways in which you can sow your seed by calling us at 1-888-691-2291. Our assistants are ready to answer your call and guide you through the process of sowing your seed by mail. Send your check or money order under the name of the Universal Church to 7075 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074. When a person sows the seed, Pastor Quincy, God does bless his life. Because in this ministry, we don't want people just uh, giving offerings, tithes, donations, and go broken. No, we want them to give, but more than this, we want them to receive, right? That's right, Bishop Joshua. We want them to receive, not the same way they are given, but in abundance, multiplied. When you sow your seed, God is obligated to do much, much more in your life. And I'm going to prove to you we have people who are doing so now. And we have a testimony of someone who was blessed through the show. Who do you have on the line, Miss Bella? I have Miss Yvonne on the line. Miss Yvonne. Hi, Miss Yvonne. Tell me something. For how long have you been watching the show on of faith? Uh, three weeks now. And what has God done for you since you've been watching the show? Uh, since I've been watching the show, um, I was having severe pain. I couldn't stand up in the morning time. I couldn't put my foot on the floor at all. And now, since I've uh, been Mr. watching Quincy. the show... Yeah. One second, Miss Yvonne. One second. Yes, Bishop? I do remember Miss Yvonne. We spoke to her. She called the program. Before you continue, she gave us the testimony, the result. We are going to watch again the video, the call, because... Whenever you call us asking for prayers, we fight for your case. We do not give up. Let us watch now the day she called us. Right now, Levon on the line from North Carolina. Hello, tell me, what is your problem? How can I help you? Um, my problem is that um, uh, I'm disabled. Uh, I get a disability chair, you know, for some months. See, like, I don't have ends to me. And and then the devil just want to put me down right now. For I, right now, I can't, from my waist to a leg now, I can't even walk right now. I have my back. I'm, I'm really going through it. Right. Listen, let me tell you something. Today we are praying for people like you. People that have been through a lot. Let me ask you, do you want a change or you can take a little bit more? I want a change. Miss Lavon, you called the right time, the right show, and your case becomes our case. All right? All right. God bless. Keep watching the show. Prepare a glass of water. 
We are going to pray together. Yes. God bless you. So, Miss Yvonne, what happened after receiving the prayer? I've been able to stand up, walk. I'm I'm not able I'm, I'm able for I can walk around in my house in the morning time I can get up I don't have to take the pain medicine anymore all of that have changed so God has healed you yes ma'am God bless you even more and prepare yourself it's just the beginning because much much more God has in store for you okay okay God bless you friend you can call don't be afraid. Because you are going to see results in your life as well. Who do you have on the line, Pastor Tobias? I have here Miss Naima. Miss Naima. Hi, Miss Naima. Yes. Please tell me something. I understand that you want to sow your seed. And this seed you are sowing is to help the ministry, right? Yes, Pastor. And it's for an inmate. How much is your seed today? My, my seed is for $100. Okay. And what is the prophecy you are in need of? What would you like God to do for you? I want God to um, change my love life. I don't have a good love life. Okay. And I say to you, receive this change in your love life. That the man of God that God has for you, you are going to meet him. Yeah. I bless you. Okay. You are going to call us back with your testimony, all right? Yes, yes, Bishop. God bless you. Tell me, Pastor Marco, who do you have on the line? I have here uh, Ken. He has just donated a Bible here. Okay, let me speak with him. Hi, Mr. Ken. How you doing? I am doing good. Tell me some. Why are you donating this Bible today? Uh, well, really, I'm donating the Bible to, to help the inmates, and I, I, I know God is able. Uh, he He just dwells in my life and do things for me. I had acid reflex. I drank the uh, spiritual water and treatment, and I, I got my revolt. And I'm just a, uh, I'm just a member of a uh, universal church, and I, and I feel good this morning. I got my oil. My water yesterday at church, and, uh, man, I'm a strong believer, Bishop. Very good, sir. And tell me some. what are you in need of right now? What is the prophecy you would like to receive? Well, I really like to, I would like to, my, my income tax, my federal income tax is, check is behind, and I would. I want them to go ahead and send it to me, and I, I want a better relationship in my life, you know, and I know God is able. And I say receive it. Whatever has been blocking you from receiving your income tax check, I declare your, this blockage removed. And receive this breakthrough right now. Okay? Call us back with the testimony. Okay, thank you. Tell us, Miss Rafaela, who do you have? Miss Annie make a donation for the Bible. Miss Annie. Hi, Miss Annie. Miss Annie, hello. hello. Tell me some, why are you donating this Bible today? Bible because I believe in the work of God and I a lot of people out there suffering and need, need to know about the work of God. So I don't... And tell me some, what are you in what are you in need of right now? What prophecy would you like to receive? Right now, I need my breakthrough to get my driver's license. So that is what I'm focusing on right now. And I'm safe delivering my pregnancy. Okay. And I say to you, receive the wisdom and knowledge you need in order to pass this test. I bless you. Okay? Thank you. God bless you, ma'am. Call us now, my friend. Don't be afraid. Exercise your faith to overcome this financial problem. Nori has more names to put inside of the holy oil. Yes, thank you, Pastor Quincy. We are approaching the moment of the prayer so you can prepare your bottle of water, your glass of water. But first, we have Mrs. Mary Sanders. She is asking prayer for complete and total healing. She wants to be healed from bone and breast cancer. Miss Mary, your name is inside of the holy oil. We have Mrs. Ida. She is asking prayer for a financial breakthrough in her life. We have Mr. Ezra. He is asking prayer for his marriage to be blessed. And we also have Mrs. Mary Davis. She is asking prayer for all areas of her life. Mrs. Mary, your name is also inside of the Holy Oil. And we will be praying for you. 1-888-332-4141. That's the number to the helpline. But you can prepare yourselves right now because Bishop Joshua will pray for all of you. It's now the moment of prayer. Let us talk to God. Here I am. In 
this moment of prayer. So despised without love, need to talk with my Lord. Oh, my oh God Almighty, God that never ever fails, I am praying to you and ask you, that you may enter the life of this person that is suffering from depression. She does not want to eat anymore, to drink anymore, to take care of the house, the family. Oh Lord, my God, and the Father. But I pray to you because you are the solution for the soul. There is this lady in a dark room. She doesn't want to socialize. She doesn't want to leave the room anymore. But I pray to you, oh God, oh Father, transform this life. Change this situation, my God. This person just wants to kill himself. And this depression came due to a loss financial struggles, the husband that left her, bad news, this person doesn't feel like eating, doesn't feel like working anymore, and because of her depression, the whole family suffers, because the whole house is in darkness, oh Lord Jesus, enter this house right now, transform the life of this person, Wipe away their tears. As it is written, the people sat in darkness. This person is seated right now in darkness. Lord, this dark room, this hospital, jail, this place is dark. Oh, Holy Spirit, light your light upon this life. Bless this person that sold the seed that donate the Bible for the prisoner. Oh Lord, my God, my Father, let there be peace. I lift to you this device with the names, the texts of those who sold their seeds, those who sent the pictures, names to be placed inside of the oil. There are many requests. Lord Jesus Christ, through this program, save souls, and give you peace. I bless the water to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God has blessed you. God has blessed America. Now I say to you, let there be light. The light of God shines upon you. Let there be light upon your life. My water is blessed. Yours is blessed. Be healed from this disease. Be healed from this panic attack. Be healed from this depression. I say to you, have a new life. I say to you, enjoy life once again.